It has been an absolutely massive week for anybody who's interested in RAF Classic. From now being able to get your guaranteed flares, easier runs in the Oculus being incentivized by extra rewards, Brewfest starting where twice a day you can get a 10% XP boost that goes on top of your joyous journeys, as well as obviously some free trinkets and pretty cool mounts, an official Phase 4 and ICC release date, more testing incoming so close to that release date as well, the official end to the season 7 pvp season finally the addition of the in-game quest tracker and probably a lot more that we're going to discuss as we go along and of course the news that probably broke your discord servers because everyone was going mental trinkets rings necklaces and cloaks from 25 man all to our hard modes have been added to the defy scourge stones vendors in dalaran for 60 scourge stones each if you was to say you'd get four or five from every gamma dungeon you've done this really ain't a lot to be fair. Two world tours maximum and you can get yourself a flare, which is pretty crazy. But let's break this down in some sort of order. So let's start with testing first. If you aren't aware, ICC will be up on the PTR again from the 26th to the 29th of September. It is just a short PTR being only three days, but it is getting extremely close to launch by the time this comes out. Having done a good sort of three out of the five days on the PTR that's just happened, there was a few niggling little issues, but nothing major. So the only boss that I didn't kill was Lich King Heroic during the last round of PTR. So I'm guessing it might be something to do with the Lich King, just because nothing else really seemed that broken. There's also been some clarification around Syndragosa's line of sight. Now, what you do on Syndragosa is depending on the raid difficulty, anywhere between two and six players will become ice blocks. And then you stand behind these ice blocks to then line of sight the frost bombs that are basically falling onto the floor. Now, very much like Saffron in Nax, if you're auto attacking the boss while you're stood behind the cube, you might go boom. And that's because they've said this is how line of sight works with temporary objects like ice blocks and it is not a bug. You must turn off your auto attack if there's an ice block close enough to the boss for you to melee or it will not block line of sight. The original intent is to prevent situations where you'd get behind an ice block in melee but still be able to hit the boss while in safety. As a result, if you're near an ice block and you're attacking a creature, the ice block won't block line of sight. This has functioned this way since Saffron from original World of Warcraft in 2006. Now this isn't relevant to the flight phase of the fight because you're never going to be close enough to the boss to actually hit it, but you'll need to be extra careful of it, especially if you're yeah, melee and you're stood next to the boss, because in the final phase you'll have tombs that are dropped so you can stand behind them to drop your stacks. And yes, unfortunately, if you're too close to the boss where you can still auto attack but you're dropping your stacks, you could die. And you're not going to die to any big explosions or anything. You're just going to slowly rot away because your stacks will be going up when you think you're actually behind the tomb dropping them. So yeah, worth being careful of. One of the biggest bits of news this week, of course, has been that we actually know when phase four is going to launch. So the week of October the 10th is going to bring phase four in general. So we're going to get the new gamma dungeons, random dungeon finder. We're going to get the new collection panels that we've already looked at for account-wide pets, account-wide mounts and toys. We're also going to get the in-game quest helper that I've alluded to already. So you'll be able to actually see different things on the map for objectives that you need to do, as well as being able to open the map directly from your quest pane, which will show you that quest specifically on the map. And as always, it will be a global release when the raid opens on October the 12th at 3 p.m. PDT or 10 GMT globally. All the bosses are going to be available on normal and heroic. The Shadowmorn legendary quest chain can be started straight away by Death Knights, Paladins and Warriors. And overall, you're going to have all that new loot that you can go in and get. And obviously, it's going to be a lot of fun and a nice change of pace from TOGC. Now, there are a couple of extra little additions that we know about in the last 24 hours that are also going to be making their way to Phase 4 the week beginning the 10th of October. There's going to be a big meta achievement for completing all of the Gamma Dungeons, much like there was the Alpha and the Beta. This time, there's going to be a reward. That reward is Arthas, which is a new little pet. I'd have preferred a mount, but I'll take a pet. Also, this does mean you should be able to get Perky Pug finally as well by doing loads of random dungeon finders. So technically, when Phase 4 launches, you should be able to get yourself two new pets. Blizzard have added this just as a thank you for actually testing these Gamma Dungeons and testing the Alpha and the Beta Dungeons throughout the PTR as well as just playing Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And the one that everyone's been going mental about, some of these big ticket items that are the only reason we go back to Alduar, and the only reason if you do GDKPs that they actually get a reasonably sized part, will become available in Phase 4 for the new currency that you're going to get from the Gamma Dungeons. Now, this isn't all hard mode items from Alduar. It is only trinkets, rings, necks, and cloaks. But to be honest with you, 
if they just slap weapons on there as well, outside of trying to maybe get Valinir for your healers, there's not going to be much reason to go back to Alduar unless maybe you need Mim's head still. Could they have added fragments of Valinir to these as well? If your answer to that was yes, that could be a very unpopular opinion. But yeah, these are quite expensive, but you expect them to be quite expensive. So to get Flare, for example, or Show of Faith or Comet, they're going to set you back 60. On the basis, you're going to get one of these from every boss. And if you were to say that there's an average of four bosses in each dungeon, it's still not going to take too long. You could say 15 gammas as a baseline to be able to get yourself Flare or Comet, which, I mean, that's not that bad. You know, doing eight dungeons in one day when, you know, the gamma dungeons are only going to take 10, 15 minutes. You're talking, a, let's have a few hours absolute maximum each day and do that for two days and you're going to be able to get like, you know, an amazing end game bis trinket. I mean, don't get me wrong, when you go into ICC, you're going to have access to things like Dislodge Foreign Object or even Phylactery. And even some of the 10 man heroic trinkets are very good as well, like Muradin's. But a lot of people will be using Flare for a long, long time, like the majority of Phase 4 at least. So being able to get it for doing a couple of days worth of heroic dungeons definitely worth it. And the same applies for Melee. Comet will still be extremely valuable, if not Biss, with some setups actually in Phase 4 as well. There's been some changes to the Oculus because the Oculus is one of those that no one ever wants to do. Apparently except for me because I actually kind of like the Oculus, but they're increasing the scaling and damage output of the Drakes in the Oculus to better align with each of the difficulties and they've also set up some new rewards. So Gamma's now going to give two more Scourge Stones in the final chest which makes this place absolutely worth doing every day. Also, other heroic and non-gamma difficulties now drop three more emblems of triumph in the final chest, and the reigns of the blue drake should now drop in all versions of the Oculus via random dungeon finder. So Oculus potentially has now gone from one that you definitely don't want to do to one that you definitely do want to do, because getting two of those extra Scourge Stones it is quite a big deal, really, because that's two extra bosses that you would have to kill to be able to get those, and you're getting them for free, essentially, just for doing one of the lesser liked dungeons. And I would say that about wraps up everything that you need to know that's come out this week. The only other minor one is that Brewfest is on at the moment, and I alluded to that at the start of the video, but at six o'clock in the evening and six o'clock in the morning, server time on whatever region you play on, if you stand around the camp outside your main city, where the actual Brewfest is going on, you'll be able to get a 10% XP buff that does stack with Joyous Journeys. So definitely worth grabbing that, as well as obviously any of the achievements that you might want as well. You can get a pet, which is obviously going to go into to your pet tab and you can go in brd every day and kill current diabra a few times at a chance at getting a mount but that's it if you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe and definitely click that like button it helps more than you know and i'll see you on the next one